welcome to our first episode of Wikimove. This is a new podcast and videocast where we discuss the future of the Wikimedia movement. I am Nicole Ebber and with me today is Niki Zeuner. We are both working for Wikimedia Deutschland in the movement strategy and global relations team. This episode was recorded at 2 p.m. CET on April 1st, 2022. Things may have changed since we recorded this, but what hasn't changed and what we still know is... By 2030, Wikimedia will become the essential infrastructure of the ecosystem of free knowledge. And anyone who shares our vision will be able to join us. Yeah, and how do we get there? How do we actually get there? We have to move to Wikimove. Wikimove is a forum for open and frank conversations about topics related to movement strategy. It is not so much about uh, having all the answers, but it's about exploring questions together. It's about thinking together on stage and on air. Um, these topics, they can be derived either from the strategic direction, uh, from the recommendations, the principles, the initiatives, or from even larger issues from our knowledge ecosystem and issues that are relevant to the transformation of the Wikimedia movement. What we hope is that this space will create opportunities to participate, to contribute and to provide feedback. Um, and our home is not only the audio and video podcast, but we also have a meta page. Just go to https okay column, column. yeah 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 <laughs> okay okay meta it's on meta people so you can just find it <laughs> okay you will find all the relevant links and uh, descriptions on in the show notes and on meta so what's the culture and the mood of this pro podcast we want this to be a space for respectful exchange and mutual support we want to look into the future with optimism rather than complaining about the past and we want to still pay respect to the old movement but at the same time critically question like the systems that we've built which may be somewhat colonial which may be unequitable uh, structures narratives habits that we've had so this will be a show that where we question those things uh, we want to shine a light on those people who try new things and develop innovations, people succeed and people who fail while doing so. Iteration, ambiguity, uncertainty are welcome in this show. And we especially welcome people with questions and we don't expect ready-made solutions. So it's a forum for conversation. The audience is anyone in the Wikimedia movement, of course, who's interested in the strategic direction or in how we are going to get there. And we'll also do a little bit latest talk of the town stuff. So we'll have some fun here. Uh, our guests are people who are working on 2030 initiatives or are participating in governance reform or people who come from underrepresented communities. Also people from other movements and those who have experiences and innovations to share. Um, we want to strengthen mutuality and solidarity in our movement, and we want to show that there are people inside and outside of our movement that have already developed solutions. So, Nicole, can you tell us about today's show, please? Yes. And on today's show, we'll be talking about knowledge as a service. What does it mean and how can we actually bring it to life? This uh, knowledge as a service is one of the two pillars in the strategic direction. And we feel that it has not been discussed that much since 2017, or has it? Uh, today, so we want to take a deeper dive into this field. And of course, we are not alone here. Um, we will be having two wonderful guests with us today. Guillaume Pommier, who will shed light on the origin story, and Tochi Precious, who will share ideas on the future. You'll hear from them soon, but first we will start with the latest news from the movement. Thank you, Nicole. So let's just jump right in and look at what's happening in our movement right now. Um, I want to first start with a sad and 
and disturbing item, which is the war in Ukraine and the war in Europe. Um, but our movement has really stepped up to the plate and we've collected some really um, helpful resources for both people who are trying to be informed on the war, um, people who are affected by it, so refugees and people in Ukraine and people in Russia, and they're all can be found on Meta under HTT, no, um, <laughs> there's a, a Meta page on the Russian invasion on, in Ukraine. So please go there, see what you can do to help our, um, our uh, colleagues and folks who are affected by this war and see what you can do to contribute to good information about this. And we'll talk a little bit at the bottom of the show about uh, our role in disinformation and misinformation combat. So um, what else is going on? And there's a photo contest actually going on. Wiki Loves Africa. It's actually a photo, video and audio contest. And uh, this year's theme is home and habitat. So yeah, get get your camera and take photos of your Africa. And it's running until 15th of April. Um, but I'm also sure you might be asking yourselves, what's actually going on with the governance reform in our movement? What governance reform? Oh, just kidding. <laughs> so there's a recommendation for that uh, in, in the movement strategy recommendations, it says there should be a charter written that defines how movement is governed and run in the future. Um, well, there's people, actually dedicated volunteers uh, that are working on that right now. And that group is, also, is known as the MCDC, the Movement Charter Drafting Committee. So uh, here a virtual big round of applause for those folks who have agreed to spend a lot of their time learning about how um, international movements are governed, um, are, um, how, how they are run, and who want to write something that is up to date for us and works for our movement. So um, you can uh, find out what they're doing. They're doing all this in a very transparent way. And there's a page on Meta. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Nicole, you're sort of the event queen. <laughs> what is going on around events in the movement? Tell events, us about that. Events, events, Yeah, there have been a couple of announcements in the recent um weeks and there will be more coming up so the first one is the wikimedia media hackathon which is happening in may it's going to be an online event um but there are grants available for hosting like regional or local events for community members so maybe also knowledge as a service might be a topic there and then the huge event of the movement, Wikimania, is going to happen again this year in August. It will also be, uh, no, it will be a hybrid event um, with online, with the main event being online, but also with support being available for regional or local events. And then we also have some big news to share. Wikimedia Deutschland is going to host the Wikimedia Summit again this year in September also as a hybrid event for Wikimedia affiliates and the Wikimedia Foundation. And the participation will be on site here in Berlin, but also, of course, remotely. And the focus will be on implementation of movement strategy, the governance reform and the programmatic work. So please go to our meta page and let us know what we should mention or announce in this section of the show. Thanks, Nicole. So we have another section that's called, Is That Hope I'm Feeling? And in this section, um, uh, I wanted to ask you, Nicole, since I was gone for a bit, um, did you hear any news lately from the hub frenzy? Uh, people are creating hubs. And I wonder what you think right now, who's going to create the coolest hub? Yeah, I might be a little bit biased here, so I'm not going to state the obvious, but what I want to say is, for me, the really the coolest uh, hub can be, be the Central and Eastern European hub, the CEE hub. Why is that? The, this group or this like uh, collection of or collective of affiliates in the Central and Eastern European region, they have been working together like for so very long. They have hosted regional events. We both have been to their events mm -hmm. and have enjoyed it a lot 
and they have explored how they can work together and support each other. And now the form basically follows these functions and they are getting closer to actually founding this. This happened. They have even written a grant request and asked the foundation for support. So if you want to know more about hubs and how they how they are built, then check out that example. So with that, speaking of non-European, we'll, uh, we'll turn to our guests and to our topic of today. Um, so we want to talk about knowledge as a service and what this means in its original intent and what it means as a value and as a call for action. Um, we are very excited to have Guillaume Pommier with us. Guillaume was instrumental in the earlier stage, phase one of movement strategy development, uh, to write the strategic direction. Where will our movement go as we move towards 2030? And Guillaume is also an employee of the Wikimedia Foundation since 2009 and has been a Wikimedian since 2005. We verified that with him. And I personally feel that we have known each other forever, if not forever. So hi, Guillaume. Our other guest today is uh, Tochi. Tochi Precious is the co-founder and program coordinator for Igbo Wikimedians User Group. And as a Wikipedian in residence at the Moleskine Foundation, has been working on developing and improving the creativity of young African editors and increasing the number of African language Wikipedias. Hey guys, thanks so much for sharing your time and wisdom with us today. And welcome to the inaugural episode of Wikimove. Welcome, Tochi. Yeah, Guillaume, uh, without further ado, can you tell us more about your involvement and your experience in the movement strategy process? Uh, yes. Hi. Um, I'm very glad to be here with you today. Um, so as, as you've explained, uh, we've been on this uh, journey for movement strategy for like four to five years now. And uh, the first phase was to... Um, get some alignment as a movement on where we wanted to go. And I was a, I was a lead architect for the first phase uh, when we all came together as a movement um, and tried to discuss our future and, you know, what, what the world around us looked like and what we should, like, what our place in it was. Um, and as, as you've explained, uh, we, we had a lot of discussions, a lot of research, and then we pulled all of that together into uh, a, a distillation of our hopes and dreams, <laughs> which was the, the strategic direction. Um, and, you know, we, we talk a lot about the direction as the main um, outcome of, uh, of the first phase. But I think all, the, all those discussions, all that process of trying to figure out a common future, um, or the, another outcome that is at least as important as the direction is the trust that we rebuild um, and the fact that we now agree that we should pull together in the same direction um, and I think that is at least as important. <laughs> um, the last thing I want to say is that even though we have those two pillars of knowledge as a service and knowledge equity and we say that you know it's related to the fact that we're a social and technical movement. It's not just that knowledge as a service is tech stuff and knowledge equity is people stuff. It's all intermingled and there are components of both uh, technology and, and humans in both. Um, and yeah, I, I think it's, it's just something to, to remember that it's all meshed together. Okay. That makes sense. So I'm, um, um... Hoping that in this conversation we can get a little closer to what it actually means, and I think Tochi is uh, is here to help um, us with that. The way it is currently, uh, one of the challenges my community is facing is accessibility. Um, first of all, internet is quite expensive when it comes to Africa as a whole because having had programs in Zimbabwe, Mozambique, South Africa. I've tried to um, compare the, um, should I say, um, the price of internet in, um, in all of these countries and even coming down to Nigeria itself. So one of them is the internet, which is making accessibility also very much difficult and challenging for the community. So if um, 
like I'm, I'm, I'm aware of some communities or some um, wiki, should I say, affiliates and user groups that are trying to uh, make Wikipedia available offline, like using the Wikifundi, or um, I don't know if I'm pronouncing the name of the project very well. And um, another thing too is, when it comes to contribution, um, when you have people who would want to contribute, there's this also ease of contribution is, is kind of a challenge for people from my community. So let's take, for example, this notability issue. Um, someone from Africa, or let me bring it down to Nigeria, you feel, or we know here that this person is very notable in Nigeria. And then you try to put up the, a biography of this person with supporting verifiable resources on um, uh, references. And then you see someone from another part of the world, probably not even from Africa, not even from Nigeria, who says that, this um, content is not, this person is not notable enough. So that ease of contribution makes it way difficult for people, or let's say even the young people we are bringing in to keep contributing. Because for example, if I put up my first article on Wikipedia and then it gets deleted, it's, there's this, um, should I call it, is demoralizing the zeal and this passion enthusiasm I used to go into, it just starts going down. So mm. this, uh, yeah, this has become a problem for us. Sometimes some of them just even get blocked at just um, creating, at the point of just creating the accounts. I was training um, um, some students some time ago at the African Leadership Academy. And before we could even finish creating accounts and say Jack Robinson, we got an IP block. So mm -hmm. it was very, very like, it was demoralizing. Like there was this chaos everywhere. The students that had this zeal to tell the African story, to um, share free knowledge about Africa and also about other people in African languages. Like before we knew what was happening, the zeal was already going down. So mm -hmm. this um, accessibility problem, this ease of contribution problem has become a whole lot of challenge for us. Sometimes it's even the, um, the user interface because um, uh, for me, I'm, I've been trying as much as possible to see if I can get maybe any community or anyone that would help, help like help to change the Igbo Wikipedia interface. It's really not even welcoming at all. But I'm wondering if we need more than sort of individual, you know, addressing individual ad administrators, but also maybe we need some structural, systemic, regulatory policy, whatever changes that. Um, yeah. That you know that that um, balance out or that even out these these inequalities that that you your communities are particularly facing, um, which you know shows goes to show what what Guillaume said it's it's not just about technology it's about people and it's about a cultural shift that needs to happen. Um, so, Tochi, the strategic direction also means that. It says we will build the technical infrastructure that enables us to collect free knowledge in all forms and languages. I want to come to a little bit to that topic of languages. And um, there's been a lot of talk when we talk about languages. What do we call them? Minority languages? No. Small languages? No. There's languages that are spoken by millions of people that are not represented on our projects. So um, you initiated the launch of the, I'm going to butcher this, Makua language Wikipedia. Um, which is, Makua is an African language with over 7 million speakers, but no digital pr footprint. So um, can you tell us a little bit more about that project? Mozambique was one of the places where we had this series of events, and that was last year, September 2021. Um, when we got to the community, the Mozamb um, Mozambique, we realized that the language of the people we wanted to work with, which is Makua, is a language of over 7 million people. But then when we were trying to um, look for, when I was trying to look for their language Wikipedia, I couldn't find it. And I had to reach out to um, Amir from the language team to assist him um, setting the language up on the incubator. And um, when he was like telling me to also get some, um, should I say books, online um, blogs or anything that is written in this language particularly so we can know how the language is written just like um for example arabic left to right and all of those i started looking for i contacted the community and they said there was they had none even 
something like a Facebook page where maybe a business does, um, someone does this kind of business, maybe translations. There was actually nothing like that existing. So it was even more frustrating that I couldn't speak um, Portuguese. So it was more like I was limited to um, talking to a, a number of people. But these people were very well-grounded professors from the Rovuma University. And then we realized that this, um, this language had no digital footprint. And then they have a whole lot of speakers, but they really wanted to tell their story. They wanted to resurrect this language. They wanted to digitize the language so it doesn't just go down like that. So um, that was how we got into, um, into getting the um, language into the incubator. We got um, speakers of the language and also translators of the language put teachers to translate, to start the media wiki translation. And they started two articles and we're aiming at 300, um, at least 300. So we'll be able to get the language out of the incubator. So um, that has actually um, been the story with the Mac OER language. That's, that's so awesome. And I wish I sp spoke that language because I, now I want to read those articles and figure out what's, you know, what knowledge we're not getting from it <laughs> because all well, we can do is consume English and German Wikipedia. So we talked about what's behind the term and also about uh, potential steps to implementation, but what's actually in front of us? Let's look at this. So Guillaume, do you have any specific thoughts on how knowledge as a service could actually manifest? Uh, yes, many. <laughs> but we, <laughs> so. we only have an hour. So um, I, I think the, the, the most obvious uh, thing that uh, that comes to mind when we talk about knowledge as a service uh, in the movement is um, access uh, and dissemination of free knowledge and possibly contribution. Um, and, and it's about making sure that free knowledge from Wikimedia sites can uh, reach as far as possible around the world. Um, but I, I think that that's sort of the, the easy part, not, not easy in, in actually implementing, but easy in terms of um, imagining the make this as as a manifestation of knowledge as a service, um, and and so I, I I think I want to to try to open our minds to all the possibilities of what else we can uh, like knowledge as a service could be, even if that means uh, projecting ourselves a little more into the the land of future imagination and and all that and. You know, I, tr I think about all the knowledge, either free or not yet free, that exists uh, in um, uh, places and organizations uh, that are culturally aligned with us. So, you know, maybe museums and archives and, and memory institutions, um, they, they might want to, um, to use um, Wikimedia products or software for their collection management. Um, and that could then be linked to Wikipedia and other sites, and it could improve the discoverability in, in both uh, directions. It would offer different paths for readers uh, to just walk the, the path of free knowledge, um, like outside and inside of Wikimedia. Um, and, you know, we, we could think about um, federated uh, Wikibase instances between Wikidata and, and Commons, and maybe museums who use uh, Wikibase uh, for their uh, collection management and, and all of that. Um, I know that there's a lot of um, uh, information uh, uh, in the field of bioinformatics and, and medicine uh, with uh, Wiki projects that are active around genes and proteins and, and all of that. I think there's a lot of potential for connection um, between all of those um, silos of, of knowledge. Guillaume has mentioned a bunch of things, but what are what are some of the things maybe that would work particularly well to address some of those challenges that you talked about? So um, for us as a community, knowledge as a service means a way to facilitate access to tangible knowledge. Mm -hmm. So for example, best practices. So if we're, we're going to be contributing to Wikipedia, um, just like I was giving the examples previously, and then um, we just try to create the account or just put up an article and 
it just gets deleted within seconds. What are the best practices? So this is what it means to us. Now, how to, that's also another one, another example. How do we do this? How do we go about doing this and all of that? And um, another thing is also templates, procedures. This is what it means to us, having access to all these tangible yeah. knowledge. So are you thinking of templates that already exist and best practices already exist? Or are you saying we should develop those still? So both the ones that already exist, but the ones that need to be developed, they mm -hmm. would be really, really, mm -hmm. they are all combined and helpful. Yeah, because what I'm thinking is make some of the best practices that we've developed in the global north over the last couple of decades may be me not you know may not be adaptable or may not be meaningful for for a different context so I, I really think also that communities like yours uh, or the the ones that you work with need to step up and, and develop their own best practices and really create new new tools and new templates and um, new ways to work yeah. um, and you know also be be willing to throw out the ones that we've developed here if they don't work. I, I think we have a, a role to play in developing the infrastructure and the tools and also the social processes to make up for some of that, whether it is to figure out ways um, to document uh, oral knowledge or um, to, to make, uh, make up for some of the, the lack of um, traditional scholarship, uh, whether that's uh, peer-reviewed research or journalism or books or um you know trying to to um to make up for that for those gaps so that uh, it, it is uh, easier to support knowledge equity with knowledge as a service as well and and you know when we talk about knowledge as a service um it, it, it's usually to discuss technology um but I think that uh, technology is not the only service <laughs> that we can offer, uh, and it may not even be the the, the main one. Um, when because you know I, in 10, 15, 20 years, I don't know if we will still have websites, um, but I do hope that we will still have Wikimedia, um, and especially in a world where. There is so much um, misleading information and so many efforts um, to, to try and, and bend the truth and bend the facts. Um, I think that as a, as a movement, our main value may be in our expertise and skill in sorting fact from fiction uh, and you know, weighing the relevance of facts and the trustworthiness um, and that whole uh, capacity for sense making, for you know, for figuring out the reliable facts, um, that could also be a service. You know, we, uh, we could have um, people or organizations reaching out to us um, to to help them figure this out, which they sort of do, but not officially. <laughs> but you know, that could be a whole other thing. Um, and when you think about it, it is about, um, it is still about our mission. It's just a different way of achieving the mission. Um, and I think the, the last thing I, I would want to say on this topic is sometimes I try to think about what could go wrong if everything worked well. Um, and, you know, when, <laughs> when we, you know, what happens if we win in, 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 in a way? And, um, and I wrote a scenario about this a few years ago where basically if we manage too well to, uh, to disappear uh, in, in the, you know, behind the scenes where everyone uses our uh, the Wikimedia knowledge, but no one knows that they do, then we might uh, be in a situation where we have trouble um, sustaining our movement and, and our technical and social infrastructure. So I think it's it's also important to make sure that um, we still have ways of showing who we are and what we stand for and how how to keep those feedback 
those uh, feedback loops of contributions and sustainability. Mm. I have the feeling we could do a show on each of those <laughs> topics that you <laughs> that you mentioned, and of course also that Tochi uh, mentioned. We could like so dive deep into yeah. these things. Um, sense making as a service, for example, I find that super super interesting to further explore and also like okay of course if we at one point become the essential infrastructure uh yeah what and nobody, nobody sees the infrastructure exactly. anymore i mean we've talked about that during the strategy process too that um if if yeah like you said like if people use our knowledge but it's not visible as coming from a wikimedia project then we may lose our funding we may lose our support And then ultimately lose our uh, relevance in the world and our visibility. So, so what do we do to stay in people's faces and say, "Look, this, we're providing this service." And uh, um, the the other thing that I I sort of picked up from your from what you said was um, it seems like we we go into this future, this strategic direction with a bunch of baggage from the past almost or a bunch of rules and things that were that made sense when we made them but now like notability for you know for wiki wikipedians from africa or um, some of the things that we do don't make sense anymore even maybe um you know focusing this much on an encyclopedic format of knowledge dissemination might not be what we need in the future so i'm also thinking maybe we should infil infiltrate social media more with our with our knowledge you know i mean we are we have social media accounts um but but just um creating pieces of knowledge that are accessible through social media um platforms and channels to counterbalance to you know, actively counterbalance the stuff that's that's being spread there so my my thinking is uh trying to find the balance between um, playing our role as uh, as a champion of free knowledge um, and also providing a, a safe environment for everyone in our movement. Yeah. Um, I think that I mean when when you when you see how many governments want to to block Wikimedia sites even when there isn't an invasion going on, you know that. Uh, free knowledge by itself uh, is is a radical thing, um, and, and so um, even if we just keep doing what we do, we will still be at risk, and we will still continue to to uh, fight this information like every day. But also, um, you know, since since we are talking about we we talked about knowledge as a as a service, uh, I, I think that our role is to provide. Um, the infrastructure and the tools and the social processes that uh, that keep that sense making machine going um, and that uh, enables um, everyone around the world to contribute to the best of their ability in a safe environment, safe from um, overzealous uh, administrators and safe from uh, authoritarian governments. Um, it's it's all about Uh, keeping that that machine going and and doing what it does well, even if we don't always understand how it does that. <laughs> Those are wonderful last words. <laughs> Looking into the future, and I think that uh, wraps it up really well. So that's a wrap for the first episode of Wiki Move. Thanks for listening. As you can tell, we touched upon many many things today that may or may not be topics for future episodes. So we scratched on stuff like governance reform, hubs, revenues, the movement charter. We didn't scratch on capacity building, but I want us to at some point. <laughs> And many other topics we'll touch on in further episodes. Um, Wikimove <laughs> is a production of Wikimedia Deutschland and our team, the Movement Strategy and Global Relations team. We thank Eva Martin, um, who pulls all the strings in the background and makes sure technology runs smoothly so that we can create excellent content here. 
Our music was composed by Roy, Rory Gregory and it is available under a CC BY license, not only on Meta, but especially on Wikimedia Commons. And of course, we thank our wonderful guests, Guillaume and Tochi. It's been a great pleasure uh, having you with us on the show. And yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank and you. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, new episodes of the show will be released every month. And we hope that um, new ideas will actually be born from the conversations here, here on stage, and that collaborations that we feature here in Wikimove can be kickstarted. And please uh, visit our meta page, our Wikimove meta page, to react to our podcast, to connect also with our listeners, and to subscribe to always be notified of new episode releases and also to post your questions uh, that we can then feature in the show. And we also have an email address, not only a meta page, uh, it's wikimove at wikimedia.de and you can continue the conversation with us here and um, suggest topics for new episodes. So that's it. Ciao for now and tschüssi from Berlin. Ciao, arrivederci. Thank you all for listening. 